All right, so up until this point, uh, I've been putting y'all up on the fishing game and I've been focusing exclusively on offense, right? But I would not be um, <laughs> feel me? I would not be your barber if I just taught you, uh, if I just told y'all, you feel me, uh, how to catch a fish and didn't talk about, you feel me, how to get the fish or when to get the fish off your line. You understand what I'm saying? So before we even jump into this, man, uh, we got to talk about eels, right? Now you might be sitting there and asking yourself or asking me rather, what is an eel, Bill? Uh, believe it or not, an eel is a fish just like any in the, well, eels are in and that's going to be a point that i'm gonna to get to in a second you feel me eels come in all shapes and sizes you understand what i'm saying uh but a couple things that all eels have in common is that one you can find them anywhere you dig what i'm saying it don't matter in the river in a lake in the ocean you can't get away from eels man Chances are, listen, there are black eels, there's white eels, there's Latina eels, there's Asian eels. You feel me? There's thick eels, there's slim eels, there's slim thick eels. Y'all understand what I'm saying? There's just as many eels in the church as there are in the club. Point being, they're everywhere. And chances are, if you go fishing for long enough, and often enough, you're going to wind up catching one of them joints eventually. The problem with eels is that whether you realize it or not, you can't eat an eel raw, you feel me, or else it'll kill you. You dig what I'm saying? In other words, what I'm saying is that all eels are toxic, you feel me? So what we're going to talk about today uh, is we're going to talk about a few signs, like nine or 10 signs that you've caught an eel. And as with the majority of these videos, I'm talking from the perspective of, you know, a cisset male in pursuit of a cisset woman. Uh, but you feel me? Uh, this is applicable, whatever you, you, whatever your persuasion, whatever your orientation, you feel me? This is applicable as well. So ladies, listen up. Um, uh, Ladies, gents, and uh, MBs alike, listen up to what Bill is finna, the science I'm finna drop on you. Number one, she ain't got no friends. <laughs> now, I say that because, again, in my personal experience, it is rare. You dig what I'm saying? It is, it is rarer than a Cowboys Super Bowl win, a Cowboys playoff appearance at that that a woman has no friends. You dig what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got no homegirls. You ain't got no confidants, not even your sister. Like I said before, because the way that men and women are socialized, women tend to value platonic relationships much more than men do. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, they tend to value their platonic relationships. You feel me? And and what I've seen on, on, until they fall in love with a guy, they'll value their friendships more than they value the uh, they romances. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, she ain't got no friends. Again, that might say more. That might say that you just ain't the type to be around. And that's why you ain't got none. They ain't got nothing to do, you feel me, with you working on yourself or you focusing on yourself. It may just be that you a dickhead. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It may just be, you feel me, that you a toxic type of person. So, yeah, there you have that. Number two uh, might be a bigger red flag than number one, and that's that she ain't got nothing positive to say about her friends. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Uh, and matter of fact, let me say this. Not just friends but strangers as well. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, I have this same philosophy when I'm at work, right? Is that 
I don't play nobody too close who every time you want to talk to me about somebody else, first of all, you know, every time you want to talk to me, it's about somebody else, right? And when you do talk, to, or even if not every time you talk to me about somebody else, anything you got to say about somebody else is always negative. It's always about, oh, well, you know, she this and he that and bada bada this, that, and the third thing. You mean to tell you ain't got nothing positive to say about nobody but yourself? You understand what I'm saying? Because listen, if you talking to me about them in this in this manner, how do I know that you're not talking about me to them in the same way? I don't. I'm just going to assume that you are and that you're just playing everybody against everybody uh, for your own ends and for your own gain, your own goal. You dig what I'm saying? I don't care how bright your smile is. You feel me? I don't care how fat your behind is. I don't, you feel me? Again, you ain't got everything you got to say about everybody in the world is always with some shade. You dig what I'm saying? That's probably poison, nigga. Um, number three. Uh, she ain't got no hobbies or interests. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Or, or let me, let me, let me put, let me, let me put it like this. I saw this video. Um, I think it was a, it was one of them 20 v one Jones, and I, I hate them so much, man. I might do a video on them Jones one day. But I saw one of them, and I think it was, I think it was a. Uh, I, I I think I, it had to it had to be Quavo. What you like to do, Riley? Okay, I like to have fun. What but kind of fun? Um, like adventures, like, yeah. flags. Yeah, definitely adventures. I like you ride all the rides. Not that, but I'm saying like traveling and fucking. Like, damn, yeah, why everything everything is what you okay then? Besides, you know, fucking this. What you, <laughs> like what else? Like you want to have? <laughs> like what what adventures? Like. Like you like to ride a horse or <laughs> Tough. I don't know if I can eat at a at a table with her. She would be like she gonna say some crazy shit. I'm gonna take her to my Duke's house. She oh, Thanksgiving. Gonna... That that's what I'm talking about. If you get one of them if you get one of them Jones that you feel me I and I've said this to y'all before on the main on the main uh channel, right? Uh you know, if you go, if you, cause I know a lot of y'all is y'all Gen Z and Gen Alpha coming up. Uh, mo most of y'all socialization comes online, right? Uh, online is where y'all meet most people that y'all wind up talking to, right? Um, and you go on their profile and all you see is ass. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like not even, like not even, you know, create, like not even creative, at, ju just as. You understand? It, it's one thing. You feel me? If you, you know, you want to dress. I mean, at the very least, you feel me. Uh, uh, give me a cami thong. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Y'all know cami from Street Fighter. At the very least, you know, uh, if you want to show ass, do it creatively. You dig what I'm saying? Show a little bit of personality with it. Y'all dig what I'm saying? But you go on the profile and listen, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with ass in a vacuum. I'm just trying to make a point. You feel me? You go on the profile and it's just ass on a sink. You feel me? Ass over a balcony. Ass at the gym. Ass um, in, in, uh, in the dressing room at home. You feel me? Uh, ass on vacation ass at work it's just everything you feel ass in a one in a onesie ass in a two-piece you feel me ass in jeans ass in pajamas and sweatpants and leggings and, and that's your entire if your entire personality is built around your attractiveness you feel me you're into and again ladies the same thing if your entire personality is built on how much uh weight you pushing at the gym you feel me your whole profile you feel me is what supplements you're taking your whole profile is you know uh, not not even not even not even you know giving me your training regimen just you know uh uh pictures of your of yourself in the mirror your pecs and your and your your back muscles and all this kind of stuff if your whole personality is built on your body and that's it you're probably boring 
you're probably basic as hell. I'm just going to be real with you. If I'm, I'm saying this is somebody, you feel me, who messed with one of them Jones before, is that she was boring as hell. Not only was she boring, but she was she was mean. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And I am going to talk about that later on, too. Uh, but yeah, man, like you ain't got no hobbies. You don't read no books. You feel me? You don't play no video games. You dig what I'm saying? You don't watch no movies but Mia Copa. <laughs> you feel but whatever, you know, schlock Tyler Perry is turning out. You dig? You don't watch nothing but Ratchet TV, nothing but, you know, Basketball Wives and, uh, and Love and Hip Hop. Uh, the next point is she's rude to wait staff or just rude to strangers in general. You feel me? Uh, like I said earlier off the top, man, um, this was something that I always paid attention to because don't nobody got no reason to be, don't nobody got no reason to be rude to a stranger unless they rude to you first. You dig what I'm saying? And you dig, uh, when you are at a restaurant and as somebody who worked in retail, I can tell you, you feel me, you really get to see a person's true colors when they ain't got nothing to lose from being an asshole. You understand? I, t go online if you don't believe me. You dig what I'm saying? You really get to see what kind of person you're dealing with. And as somebody, you feel me, who did well uh, work in retail, you dig what I'm saying? Listen, what they say about the suburban white moms is true. I'm not going to lie to you. Those, those were, I, I'm not going to say by far, but they were at the top of being, you know, some of the worst customers we had. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, but them and the independent contractors, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We're big assholes. You understand? But anyway, I digress, man. Um, my point being this is that, you know, it says a lot about a person, uh, when they, uh, take any opportunity to take advantage and to show their true colors. And like I said, wait staff, it's their job to be courteous, right? It's their job that that's how they make their living is off of tips, right? So if you got it in your head that, you know, I have the power, you feel me? Uh, it's up to me to determine, you know, whether you're going to uh, get this $10, get this $15, $20 or not, regardless of how much, you feel me, of a booty butthole I am to you. I'm just going to treat you any old kind of way because that's your job. Nigga, if she do that to a stranger, you better best believe she probably does it to family and she's going to do it to you too. You understand what I'm saying? So there you had that point number, nigga, I don't even know what, what number we on now, but it's that she treats her family like crap. Now, listen, I understand that everybody has some dickhead family. I'm saying this as somebody who has, you know, uh, a couple of dickhead family members uh, myself. Matter of fact, uh, the, the irony of making that point is that in the process of creating uh, this list, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? The first people who I thought of uh, when, when creating this list was not an ex. It was family. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? As I was putting it together, I said, damn, that sound like so-and-so. You understand? But I say that to get to this and not to get too, you know, philosophical to whatever with this, but Emmanuel Kant came up with the, the concept of the categorical imperative. You feel me? Um, and basically what that is, it's a secularized version of the thesis statement for every world religion in history. And that is to do unto others as you will have them do to you. You feel me? Basically what Kant said was this, and I'm paraphrasing here, is that you ought not to treat people as mere means to an end, but you should treat them as ends in themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so what does any, any of this have to do with uh, what I'm telling y'all? Well, what I found is that people who, because, you know, we're socialized and we're conditioned, you feel me, um, that fam the family is the 
ultimate tribe, right? That is your unit. That is, you feel me, uh, your clan, so to speak, or at least your first clan, your first tribe, you feel me, is your family. And people take advantage of that. Y'all, again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about an ex here. I'm talking about family. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, matter of fact, I have, I had a family member, you feel me, who, uh, you know, was uh, acting and talking out of pocket a few weeks ago, and I had to put them in their place. And uh, just yesterday, you feel me, they hit me back up after, uh, after, you know, month or two, whatever it was, not to say hi, not to apologize, but to ask for money. You feel me? The ask for uh for eighty dollars. You dig what I'm saying? And the reason why people do that is because they feel because I'm family, you have to treat me a certain way, regardless of how I treat you, regardless of what I say. And that's you know, uh, that's parents do this. You feel me? Siblings do this. Uh, people's kids do this. You understand what I'm saying? Grandkids do this. Grandparents do this. Aunties and uncles do this. Because I am, so this is why, you know, these family secrets of abuse, you feel me, go on for so long and everybody has one. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're socialized. We could, oh, you don't go against family, right? And so people take advantage of that and they use that as an excuse, you feel me, to treat you like you know what? You understand what I'm saying? Oh, well, you got to give me grace after grace after grace because I am your mama, because I'm your daddy, because I'm your daughter, because I'm your son. You feel me? Now, listen, like I said, it's quite possible. It's quite possible that everybody in your family besides you is a dickhead. It's possible. I've seen enough Dr. Phil episodes to know this. You understand what I'm saying? It's possible that you are Cinderella. You feel me? That you are, you feel me? The perfect little, you know, the prince, the princess, or whoever that the whole world is conspiring to keep you down. I'm not saying that it's common. Despite the facetiousness in my tone, though, it does happen. But what I am saying is that more often than not, you got to look at the man or the woman in the mirror and say, you feel me? If everybody is saying the same thing about me, then maybe I'm the one that's wrong. But again, when you lack empathy, you cannot do that. You lack the capacity to do that. So what I'm saying to y'all, amen, is when you run across one of them joints, and again, these is for men and for women, you come across one of them joints, especially if it's a combination of friends don't like you, family don't like you, or you ain't got no friends and your family don't like you and you rule the stranger. Any combination of those three, man, especially if you hit all three or four, man, that, that's a trifecta, man. You know, red light should be just shooting off in your brain at that point, so there you have that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Um, the next point that I wanna get into is if they make their ideology, their entire personality, specifically if it's a religious one. Now, like I said, man, church girls, <laughs> church girls got a reputation, man. And I'm not gonna say that it's completely, um, well, I, I married a church girl. You understand what I'm saying? Um, you know, but, and I was talking to my wife about this the other day, is that one thing that I've always appreciated about her is that uh, her, um, her faith does not define her entire personality. It's just an aspect of it, you dig? But you get these people, you feel me, who make the Bible their entire personality. You understand what I'm saying? Or they make, you know, being Muslim their entire personality. They make being, you know, uh, 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 what, whatever religion they practice or whatever. And it's not even just, like I said, I'm talking uh, explicitly about religion, but political ideology as well. Your whole ideology revolves around being, you feel me, uh, 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 conservative. You understand what I'm saying? Your whole personality revolves around being leftist. That's your entire, your entire personality is Marxism. Your entire 
personality is socialism, is communism, uh, 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 or whatever. That that is, you feel me? Getting back to you feel me? The 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 religious piece is that what I found personally is that people who make the Bible their entire personality, right? They do so to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To uh, explain away, you feel me, um, flaws in their character that they can't otherwise, or flaws, you feel me, in their values that they can't explain otherwise. Oh, you feel me, I don't like gay people, you feel me, oh, well, the Bible says, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, well, you know, uh, uh, um, I'm a misogynist. They ain't ever going to call themselves a misogynist. But you'll find it, you know, people who never want to take a woman's advice. People who never want to, you know, hear a woman's input. People who, you know, uh, you know, uh, feel like, you know, women ought to be like children. Be seen and not heard. You did, oh, well, you know, the Bible says... You understand what I'm saying? And cherry pick and completely ignore, you know, complete other pack, completely ignore the fact that the Bible talks about uh, female apostles. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Completely ignore the fact that the Bible uh, explicitly states and talks about women preaching and prophesying and, and praying in public. Matter of fact, go so far as to say that when a woman preaches, she ought to have her head covered. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Literally, a chapter or two before the John that says that women can't, and I'm not going to get into the into the whole, you know, exegesis of it because this ain't that video, but my point is, is that what I found is that that some of the worst people in the world, you understand what I'm saying, excuse their dickheadry with religion. You understand what I'm saying? Think about how dangerous, and, and I'm saying this as a practicing Christian myself, think about how dangerous an idea that is in the wrong hands. That, you know, you can treat people like the absolute scum of the earth. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to beg nobody's forgiveness. You don't got to make an amends to nobody. You don't got to say, I'm sorry to anybody but God. You understand what I'm saying? You can live, you feel me, the most scummiest, low down type of life. And all you got to do to have a clean sleep is to take a bath in cold water. Y'all, y'all think about how dangerous an idea that is in the wrong hands, and that's why you know that 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 phrase. No, there's no uh, zealot like a convert. That's part of it. You understand what I'm saying? Because I feel like part of in the back of some people's minds, they know they ain't shit. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They they know they ain't. And they know that really what I really want, if I really want to be Christ-like, if I really want to be a, a, a true blue Christian and follow Christ, you feel me? Then there are some bridges that I burnt. I may not be able to rebuild them, but I need to go back and make things right. But instead of that, instead of doing that, what you do is, oh, well, you know, only God can judge me. God knows my heart. You feel me? I've been baptized. You know, I'm shouting now. I'm picking them up and putting them down or whatever. So, again, if somebody makes their ideology, their entire personality, specifically, they make religion their entire personality. More than likely, what that means is that they either lack the capacity or they lack the will to challenge their value system to challenge, you feel me, their own implicit biases and instead they refer to a higher power to justify, you know, their ass backwards way of thinking and uh and politic. Um next point uh is that she uh she she never wants to pay or she always has a problem with paying. Uh what I mean by that is you know, and especially, you know, the deeper y'all get into the relationship and she always wants you to foot the bill. I'm not talking about, you know, necessarily that she doesn't offer, even though in, 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 in my opinion, especially when y'all just talking, right? It's been my experience that more often than not, especially when y'all just in the talking phase, y'all not in the dating phase in quite in the dating phase yet, that most girls will offer to pay. Most girls will pay their own way. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because again, you you're not my boyfriend, you're not my man. Why why should you feel like you need? But on the flip side of that, there's also some girls that just feel like you know they should get the red carpet rolled out for them just for waking up in the morning and taking a dump. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Again, all of this stuff that you see happening in the beginning stages, it's only going to get just the same way that they say with money, man. You understand what I'm saying? Anytime you get something, you get a little piece of something, it don't make you change. It just make you more of who and what you already are. You dig? So if you a spoiled little princess, you understand what I'm saying? Thinking you God's gift to humanity, God's gift to the world from jump, that's only going to be magnified once we seal the deal, man. And listen, man, you can't... With that, you can't get mad, right? If you always, oh, you know, let me pay the bill. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, you know, I got it. I, you, when you're always the one taking the initiative to pay and she don't say something, you can't get mad about that, nigga. You understand what I'm saying? But you feel me? If you bring it up, bring it to her, bring it, once you bring it to her attention, if she hasn't noticed yet, and you say, hey, you know, I'm in a tight this week, you know, uh, funds is, you know, kind of slim, you know, you mind, pit oh, well, I don't know why you even invited me out if you couldn't afford to pay, I don't even know you, why would you even talk to me if you can't afford me, you know, oh, I ain't got what you think, I made the money, what you think I got it, you had you had enough money to get them press ons, didn't you? <laughs> you had a, enough money to get them, you know, them 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 fake lashes. You understand what I'm saying? But you ain't got much. You can't pay for a slice of cheesecake. You dig what I'm saying? You had enough to uh to hit up Sephora <laughs> and to hit up uh you know the Mac Beauty, but you can't you know pay you feel me for a cheesesteak. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying with that man is that a, a, a lack of courtesy is what it boils down to. Um, the next point is that, uh, she, uh, wants to monopolize your time. You dig what I'm saying? Um, I said in the John about, you know, how to know that a girl is into you, that she'll, uh, that she won't want to go more than a few days without hearing from you. But at the same time, you got to know how to respect the person's boundaries. Now, again, if you get one of them, if you get one of them joins, you feel me that, you know, always, you know, who, you know, listen, it, it'll get to a point I've, I've listen, I'll where y'all start talking or start calling each other multiple times throughout the day. You understand what I'm saying? Especially you feel me in that puppy love phase. You understand what I'm saying? But if and when you establish a boundary and say, Hey, you know, um, I need some time to myself, you know, or I need some time, uh, you feel me, I'm going to go hang with the boys tonight, you feel me, or I'm going to, you know, play some video games, you feel me, or, you know, I got this family thing, and that shouldn't be no argument, you dig what I'm saying? She shouldn't have no problem with you setting boundaries, you dig what I'm saying? If she always, you know, throwing a tantrum or she always, you know, uh, 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 having an issue with you not being in her space, you dig what I'm saying? Again, uh, with men as well, you dig, especially if they, especially, man, look, I know I keep coming back to this family thing, man, but this one of the biggest red flags in the world, man, is when somebody has a problem with you having family time. You dig what I'm saying? What they trying to do is they trying to they trying to uh create a barrier, you feel me, between you and your people so that they can sequester you off. You dig what I'm saying? Cut off, you feel me, all of those intimate bonds, those intimate relationships, so that you ain't got nobody but me. So that so that when you when you do want if you do want to leave, all right, nigga, you gonna run, where you gonna run to? <laughs> you ain't got nobody. You feel me? You you uh, you cussed out your mama for me. You feel me? You cut off your homeboys for me. Who who you got besides me? You understand what I'm saying? Again, ladies, the same thing. I've, I've seen it so many times. You dig what I'm saying? It's like a broken record. You feel me? These niggas, you know, they get y'all and they, you know, they separate you from your peoples. And then, you know, they start this abusive behavior, these abusive practices or whatever and whatnot. It's like, all right, where you going to run to now? Who you going to call? You understand what I'm saying? Who you going to call that? You, what bridge you going to cross that you ain't already burnt? 
You understand what I'm saying? So that's a big red flag right there is if they want to monopolize your time. You understand? Um, the next John is, uh, you feel me, um, that all of their exes are crazy. Now, put an asterisk next to this. Because I know a lot of you young niggas is going to think that what I'm saying is that, you feel me, her past partners are predictive of her behavior or her character. Nigga, grow up. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody picks bad partners at some point in their life. You dig? Especially when you young. Uh, like I said, there's, a, I say an asterisk because there's a possibility. Look at this ugly ass cyber truck man let's see if y'all can see it what is you doing nigga you got a uh and look at how dirty that joint is look at this <laughs> look at how dirty that thing is man that that look it look like somebody took a shit on the side of it but anyway um um i i lost my train of thought man in that goofery um you know uh give me a second i'm probably going to edit this part out all right, so uh, especially if they're young, and y'all notice that I'm using their instead of she now, because like I said, a lot of these, you feel me, are intersex and you know are intergender and interorientation, if that's even a phrase. Especially if they're young, which means they're inexperienced, and especially if those relationships tended to be longer term. So, you know, more than like, you know, six ish months at a time it's possible that all of their exes are crazy you dig what i'm saying but if they have a habit of you know getting into these short-term flings and i guess i can join this on to another point is that they don't know how to be single which kind of goes back into the monopolizing of uh, a uh, thing if they don't have an identity outside of their relationships you dig what i'm saying if they don't have an identity outside of you know hopping from one person I, and i'm saying this as somebody you know who who did this there was there was a point where in my life in my um in my college years where i actively avoided you dig getting too attached to people because uh, I had had my heart broken. And so, you feel me, I used hoeing. <laughs> you, you feel me? I, I used hoeing to cover my heartbreak, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And I was no good for nobody. You understand what I'm saying? I Listen, if I could go back and tell them girls, you know, uh, 10 and however many years ago, I'll be like, stay away from that nigga. He, he, he got some, he got some healing. He got some bell hooks to read. <laughs> you understand? And, that, and yeah, I, I would say, and, and instead of, and instead of sleeping with him, how about you buy him a copy of How to Love? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? How about you buy him a copy of The Will to Change and then come back and hit him up in, in, in a while? But whatever, I digress, man. Um, you know, uh, yeah, if, if they have a habit of getting into these short-term things, right, uh, into these short-term relationships and you know, they all fail because the reality, the reality of most relationships is that it's never, I won't say that never. The reality of most relationships is that when they go bad, it's not just one person was the scum of the earth and the other was a perfect angel. You did some things. I did some things. You feel me? And we both share some culpability in that. And if they not willing to accept the the uh, the fact that they maybe were not the perfect partner, it's probably an indicator of a lack of accountability. And again, it's going to carry over into uh in in into into the new joint whenever that starts. So yeah, there you have. Put an asterisk on that, but keep that in mind. Uh, the next point that I want to get into is that uh she. Or they, they already got somebody. I'm going to keep this short and sweet and simple. If they was a cheater, you know, way, way, way back in the distant past, then that's a different story. But if they left somebody, if they got with you by leaving somebody else, that's probably how that joint's going to end. You feel me? I've seen it. Time and memoriam. You dig?
And this is the last point that I'm going to get in today because this video is already running super duper long is if and when they joke about abuse, not only do you leave that alone, but you warn everybody that you know about them. You understand what I'm saying? Specifically when it comes to men, right? Because we're conditioned to, oh, well, you know, uh, if you can't handle your woman, right? If you, you know, uh, if she feels so much as to put hand, then that, then that is, that is an indicator of your lack of manhood. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, your feebleness more than it, more than it is anything wrong with her. It's the fact that you can't control your woman. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, you know, well, you know, I fight dudes, you know, uh, I fight guys, you know, I hit guys. I'm so mean. You feel me? I'm so, uh, 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 crazy. Oh, you know, I was just, you know, you know, I can, you know, I just get a little crazy sometimes, you know, I hope you don't, you don't have a problem. Nigga, you better run. You understand what I'm saying? Cause really what she's telling you is the moment that things go sideways, I'm gonna put hands on you. I'm gonna put hands on you and I'm gonna dare you to do something about it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to dare you to call the cops because when you call the cops, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell them that you started it and I'm going to ruin. Not only am I going to beat the hell out of you, but I'm going to ruin your entire life in the process. Matter of fact, I might get my brothers up here to handle you. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, a, a, a girl, uh, a girl start joking about putting hands on you or a boy start joking about putting hands on you. You know, matter of fact, it don't even got to be physical abuse. You feel me? Somebody start, you know, calling. Now, listen, I know some of y'all, you know, y'all some really, you know, uh, freaky deaky folks in the, uh, in, in the comments and you know, y'all get in the bedroom and you know, y'all like being called, you know, all kinds of bitch and slut and you know, uh, uh, yeah, you like that, you hoe, you like that, uh, you like that, don't you, bitch, all that kind of stuff and whatever and whatnot. Hey, listen, whatever y'all do in that bedroom between consenting adults, that's between y'all. You understand what I'm saying? But when somebody calls you out of your name, a girl calls you a bitch, calls you, you know, the F slur, you know, calls you gay, calls you zesty, calls you, uh, you feel me, uh, 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 I forgot the other term, uh, calls you sassy as an insult. You dig what I'm saying? That should tell you how much they think about you. You understand what I'm saying? Especially in the, it, it, as a joke or in the heat of the moment and then you want to come back and apologize and say, oh, I ain't really meant, well, if you ain't mean it, then why did it come out your mouth? Why was it in your head to say in the in in the don't don't play that I ain't mean that because if you ain't mean it you would have never thought it to say it so you would have never thought it to say it rather so there y'all have that how to spot an eel and get rid of them well I ain't tell y'all how to get rid of them. just drop them nigga <laughs> you block them <laughs> that that block them change your number do whatever you got to do yeah there you have it deuces.